So let's talk about a different case, uh, also a, a, an operating under the influence of alcohol case, but it's the Commonwealth versus Proya case. And this case is also located in the MPTC student guide. You need to read these things carefully so that you're armed with knowledge. So in this particular case, uh, counselor, the state police received a call of an auto accident on 495 in the area of Franklin. And when they arrived there, they spoke to a family that uh, stated they had been struck from behind while on 495 and the two vehicles were briefly attached to one another. The driver of the vehicle that struck them was able to pull his vehicle away and he took off on exit 16, just off the highway. Maybe about a quarter of a mile down the road, his vehicle came to a halt. It was sparking, it was dragging, it was uh, somewhat damaged and it ended up in a snowbank. When the police got there, there was no operator. And in fact, the operator had been wandered off down the road, but they did see airbags deployed. They found some identification in the car and also what appeared to be blood stains uh, on the airbag. When they located uh, uh, Mr. Proya, they made some observations as well and they placed him under arrest. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was uh, convicted a third time operating on the influence, and he appealed that. So I'd like you to tell us the strength of the officer's case as regard to the operating under and also the driving as to endanger. Sure. So um, this case really focuses on the, the fact that the individual, the defendant, was not with the vehicle when the officers came on scene, right? So the um, defendant automatically has a, has a great argument that, hey, it's not me because how can you prove that I was operating the vehicle? So the burden, of course, is always on the officer, always on the Commonwealth to, to prove that, that element of operation, but it makes it particularly difficult in this case because the operator is not even present. So that's one of the challenges for, for the officers in this case. So how do they do it and what does the court say? So I guess start with the end. The appeals court finds that there was sufficient evidence here to prove operation, even though Proya was not present when the officers came on scene. So what did they point to? Well, when the officers came on scene, like you said, um, the, snow, the car was found in a snowbank. It was abandoned. Mm -hmm. Driver's license, Proya's driver's license was on the, the floor of the vehicle. Uh, there was blood stains on the, um, in the vehicle as well as on the, um, the airbag, which had been deployed. Um, there were, um, there was evidence that, uh, there was intoxication involved. <laughs> I believe there was, there was a, a couple things that the officers pointed to, but what happened was the officers during the course of the investigation, they go to the tavern right down the road, which is a pretty short distance. Um, they go down and that's where they find Proya. And sure enough, when they find Proya, um, he's banged up. He's in a rough shape. Yeah. He has lacerations on his face, on his hands, indicative of having um, sustained a, some injury to his face from the, from the airbag. Um, he didn't have his license on him because it was on the floor of the vehicle. The vehicle was registered uh, to Mr. Proya, and um, the location of the tavern where he was found is a short distance. So within minutes of the vehicle being parked or being pushed into a snowbank and then him walking there, it was conceivable that, yes, he, he could have walked there from, from the vehicle. Um, in addition to that, Proya's uh, jeans and, and shoes were wet, which they believed indicated that he was walking through the snow. It was a snowy uh, day um, or evening, rather. And so uh, they were able to, to piece all of that together, kind of create this picture, create all of these puzzle pieces together uh, to show the court that, look, it's, it's highly likely that uh, Mr. Mr. Proyer was the operator. And here, the court did find that there was actually sufficient evidence to prove operation both for OUI and a neg op charge. Well, it seems a lot easier to understand when you have uh, someone like Eric explaining the elements to us. And it's important for you to realize that the way in which uh, Counselor Stepanis articulated that can be reflected in your police report timing, the facts that you see, the observations that you make, all go together to solidify your case. So thanks for paying attention to this briefing, and we'll get to you a little bit later in our training.